1,000 kilometres north of Perth on the Western Australia coastline lies Hamlin Pool, part of Shark Bay. It's desolate and inhospitable up here. There's no denying that the environment is harsh. And that's true for underneath the water as well as above it. Yuck. The salt levels here are twice as high as in normal seawater, a forbidding environment for any life form. But as far as the scientists are concerned, this is a haven for understanding how life first began. When the Earth cooled thousands of millions of years ago, the first life forms to arise were the cyanobacteria. Through their daily processes, they changed the Earth's atmosphere to oxygen. Some, such as these single cells, surrounded by a sheath, learned to cooperate. Over thousands of years, these microscopic organisms built high-rise structures called stromatolites. Fossil remains of such stromatolite structures exist in other parts of Western Australia, dating back a staggering three and a half billion years, making them the world's most ancient life form and the granddaddy of us all. They existed in a world where the environment was much more extreme and where more highly developed life forms could not survive. Then, about 570 million years ago, things started to change. The stromatolites went into a decline at a time when there was a great evolutionary explosion in more advanced marine life. There seemed to be a connection. The stromatolites could cope with the harsh conditions, but when those harsh conditions disappeared, other life forms flourished. The stromatolites couldn't cope with the competition. Well, that's been the theory. But now, at Lake Clifton, 100 kilometres south of Perth, a young scientist has made a remarkable discovery. Linda Moore from the University of Western Australia has found a very different kind of stromatolite, one which is growing in water less salty than the sea and in an environment far from harsh. Stromatolites are characteristically supposed to be found only in extreme environments where they where they preclude any grazing fauna, animals that would eat the bacteria. But here, Linda has found these structures teeming with life. She's called them thrombolites. Well, I'll show you, we'll have a look at one. There you go. If you look at this structure, you'll see it's not layered. There aren't distinct layers within that. Now, stromatolites, as the term implies, are layered rocks whereas thrombolites have a quite different structure. It's more of a clotted texture. You can see it's got holes, holes within it. it. That's mm. right. Now, clotted, like uh, thrombosis, means clots. So it's a thrombolite. Now, hopefully. Now, if we break that open, you can see masses and masses of little animals, little crustaceans. So what mm. we've got here is a thrombolite coexisting with a grazing fauna. So they're not being destroyed by the animals feeding within them. Linda's theory is that thrombolites evolved from stromatolites to accommodate other life forms. But they were defeated in the end by the faster growing corals. Linda has been working on the Lake Clifton structures for 10 years, and there's still so much to find out but time is running out for both Linda and the thrombolites. Because of growing settlement in the area and more intensive farming techniques, the delicate balance of the water going into the lake is changing rapidly. Increasing phosphorus levels have encouraged algae to grow, especially this green clodophora. It's growing over the thrombolites, cutting out sunshine and smothering them.
This unassuming life form has been around for half a billion years. The specimen in my hands has been slowly going about its business for hundreds of years. Yet, in a very short space of time, we, through our carelessness, could wipe it out. Next on ABC, our incredible science fiction special, First Born, starring Charles Dance. <laughs>